Hey guys, welcome and welcome back. Good to see you and nice to meet you. I'm Megs and today we're gonna to do a video that's oh, my little heart. Um, I love complexion products, meaning foundations, concealers, but mainly foundations. I will touch upon concealers and other kind of like adjunct accessory kind of complexion products, but these are gonna be my top picks for foundations. So just keep on watching. Okay guys, so I am, as I mentioned earlier, gonna be doing my top complexion products, um, mainly focusing in on foundations. For those of you who don't know me quite yet, I enjoy, eyeshadows are definitely one of my vices and I am definitely a foundation ho, um, for sure, for sure. Uh, and my skin, just so you know, is a normal kind of combination a little bit oily and then dehydrated. Uh, typically in the winter time, it's normal dehydrated and then more summer, I get oily here in kind of the T-zone area. I do have some hormonal breakouts and I do get, I'm getting more and more acne, um, especially in 2020. It's really come oh, crazy due to mask acne or mask knee, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway. So I haven't really been wearing a lot of complexion products in terms of full foundations at work just due to me wearing a mask for 12, 13 hours at a time. Um, it just kind of breeds bacteria, if you, if you know what I mean, without getting too you know graphic and disgusting. Um, so I'll, uh, then on my days off, I'd want my skin to breathe and also more skincare was kind of the emphasis and focus for me this year, but I still loved my foundations and I did purchase a few, but uh, there's some standard ones that I just absolutely love and one new one that, or a couple of new products that I introduced to my collection um, that I absolutely fell in love with. Let's get started. Okay, in no particular order, I'm going to be talking about some foundations. So. One of my favorite, favorite repurchased and loved, loved, loved foundation is this one by Cogendo. This is the Aqua Foundation. I have mine in the shade 113. I've tried 213, which was supposed to be a little more olive, um, but I think 123 might be a little bit better shade and then I might mix the two because I do find this is a little bit too light for me at the moment. Maybe in the dead, dead, dead of winter, um, this might be a little bit more, but I love the look of this. My skin looks flawless when I wear this. Um, love this foundation. I would say it's a soft, luminous um, look to the skin. Skin looks like skin. There's, I feel like there's almost like skin ingredients that are beneficial. It is a Japanese brand. You will find if you watch me for a while, that I do love Japanese skincare and I love Japanese foundations, typically speaking. Um, they almost always include uh, skincare ingredients uh, within the formulation, so I love that. And this is just, skin looks like skin, it's not too heavy, um, and it's just beautiful. I, I know I'm gonna have a perfect skin day when I wear this. So that's one of my favorites. Uh, another one that is really lovely too is this one from Guerlain. Um, I picked this up a couple of years ago, but I still love it. Um, I need to probably um, <laughs> let go of it because it might have turned bad. It is heavily fragranced. Um, so if you don't like fragrance, uh, then don't pick this one up because uh, while it doesn't linger, it will dissipate. There is still a heavy, heavy fragrance when you first put it on. However, your skin will look flawless. I have mine in the shade 2N, uh, maybe a little bit light for me right now, um, and this gives you skin-like kind of finish. You're gonna see a pattern here, skin-like finish, and kind of a light to medium coverage. Maybe bordering on full, um, but it's very, very beautiful, and it wears on me very, very well. Uh, another one that I don't think is on the market, and I'm so sorry if you can't find it, but this one is from Givenchy. This is the Photo Perfection um, Foundation. I hate the fact that there's this pa this paper um, label. I don't know what happened there, but I also live in Canada where we're bilingual, so sometimes things have to be comply with the bilingual standards. But anyway, so this is gorgeous. This is going to be similar lines of the... Um, 
I would say in similar look to Le Sensiel from Guerlain. Um, it's going to be flawless, it's going to be light medium, skin-like, kind of satin, um, beautiful coverage, and I have in the shade 5 Perfect Praline. So, I, but I don't think they make it this anymore, which is completely unfortunate. Okay, oldies but goodies are the face and body from MAC. I use this on really good skin days or in the summertime when I just want a little bit of coverage. Um, I haven't got a lot of use of this in the winter time because I have a lot of breakouts. Um, not too bad today, but I have a few here and along this area here, hormonal, I hate it, I love it, ugh. Uh, I definitely don't want more of it. Um, but yes, face and body, I have it in multiple shades depending on the time of year. It's just light, liquidy, and does exactly what I need it to do when I need it to do it. Don't expect a high coverage because you won't. If you're super oily, I would say stay away from this particular foundation. Um, it will make you oilier. And on the same lines-ish to the face and body is this one. This one I took with me. This is a Laura Mercier, sorry, Tinted and Moisturizer Natural Skin Perfector. I took this with me to Mexico before COVID wreaked its havoc on the world. Um, and I have it in shade 3N1 Sand, which is a little obviously too deep for me right now. But at the time when I was getting tanned uh, and definitely on the trip, this was fantastic for just a little glow, a little coverage if I wanted to kind of, you know, just even out in terms of uh, making me look a little fancy. Let's talk, um, I'm going to talk about my last foundation here, um, but I want to talk about, I'm going to leave that for the very last and then I'm gonna, I want to talk about some adjuncts. Um, so I used this and this sometimes when I just wanted some spot treatment. Um, they're very similar in terms of coverage, in terms of finish, uh, and the ones I'm talking about is the Forever Skin Correct. I have 2.5N. I'm going to try the 2N because I think it's better match for me now. Um, and then this is the Makeup Forever HD in 30. Um, these are fantastic if you just want to kind of spot um, coverage, I guess. Then, one of my favorite concealers, I need to get a new one up, is this one from NARS. This is the uh, Creme Brulee 2.5 in the Soft Matte Concealer. I was actually using this under the eyes uh, for quite a while, but this can be used all over the face and so forth. Um, these are This is fantastic. I just kind of ran out of it and other concealers kind of took over. Those concealers that took over for under my eyes specifically were these ones from Armani. These are the face fabric, right? Face fabric. Power Fabric, my bad. Power Fabric uh, concealers I have them in the shade 5.25 and 5. Um, one has a little bit more pinky tone in it, one is a little bit lighter with kind of more yellow tone to it, uh, depending on my needs and what tone I am. Um, these are great. They do not budge. I love the way they look underneath my eye. They've got good coverage, they don't crease, and they're fantastic. It's just a matter of finding the right shade, I find. Okay. And then what I use in conjunction if my dark circles are super, super great um, is this. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the shade medium number two. This is a corrector. Has a beautiful peachy um, or peachy pink uh, color. More peach than, than pink, to be honest. Um, and I use this just right here where I have darkness. I don't put it everywhere. I just use it right here exactly where I need it and the minimalist amount, and this has lasted me a good while. These? Okay. At first I had no clue how to use these. I thought these were like, ugh, bullshit. Um, and just basically a cash grab. These are the Hollywood, Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. I have them in two shades, two and four. So when I'm at kind of darker, obviously, this is more of a medium, and this is a, a f light. Um, I'll use this now, so you can use this all over your face before you put foundations, you can put this spot areas, it's kind of an enhancer, a highlighter, um, it gives you just a beautiful luminous look to the face, while it's being very subtle. It's not going to be like, oh my god, but it's just like, just a little something, you know, to add to your beautiful, already beautiful face. So. Um, you can use it alone. I don't highly recommend that because I think you look almost a little too 
luminous sometimes um, but under a foundation or just spot areas I think is really really stunning last foundation that I want to talk about that kind of kind of blew my mind obviously honestly this this year was this one from makeup forever it's the reboot this is a fantastic foundation it is I would say light to medium um, it has a nice I have it in the shade sorry Y315 has a nice color range uh, it brightens, smooths, firms, hydrates, and evens out. I don't know about the firming, but it does the others. My skin looks flawless. Um, I find, even though this might be a little too dark for me, I probably could get away with it because if there's something that I don't know if it adjusts, but I love this foundation. It's liquid. It's, um, it just looks perfect. Um, I love this. Well done, Makeup Forever. Uh, you don't hear much about them, but you know, you got to give kudos where it deserves. And yeah. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, happy that you've been here and take the time out of your day to, uh, to watch. Uh, please stay safe, take care of each other, and I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.